An investigative journalist from Washington, Wayne Madsen, says the outbreak of the virus is raising suspicion. I spoke to two journalists, one from Mexico City and the other one from Jakarta, Indonesia. And of course, Indonesia had a problem not long ago with bird flu. Uh, both these journalists have been in touch with UN and World Health Organization officials, including a scientist who's dealt with Ebola virus and uh, HIV AIDS in Africa. And it's their conclusion, uh, these scientists who they've spoken to, that uh, this is a very unusual form of flu because it looks like it is a product of some gene splicing. The flu contains elements of bird flu, two forms of human flu, and, uh, and, and, and various forms of swine flu. To them, it doesn't look like this is naturally occurring. The other thing is the target uh, for this flu, as, as opposed to other flus, it's not the very young and the very old. It's people between the ages of 20 and 45. And the other thing is uh, people are not contracting this from pigs. Uh, the National Pork Council here in America says pigs are not being affected. This is human-to-human -human contact. So people who either eat pork or are exposed to pigs are not uh, getting this flu. Very unusual. Uh, and, uh, of course, the scientists are very alarmed by the way it's being spread and the, and the speed at which it's being spread. The thing you need to be really aware of is the avian flu. And I'm going to tell you a story about this. And you might hear disinformation saying it's not going to be a problem. Don't believe it. This is the Brainiac virus. This virus is the most intelligent, deadly weapon that has ever been released. There is nothing like it in history. And the reason why, and I'll tell you why it is, and this is a very interesting story. I've had Dr. Henry L. Nyman on my program from Recombinomics uh, for the past two years until about four months ago. Henry was on about every two weeks. He's also on the Jeff Rents show. And um, I like to do a lot of my own producing. So I spend dozens and hundreds of hours. Sometimes I'm working 20, 22 hours a day trying to collect material and analyze it. Because I know when I look around to see if they're my colleagues, my doctors, I call my quivering white-coated colleagues who are shivering jellyfish, if they will back me up or if they'll try to corroborate, or scientists. Well, Dr. Nyman is a genius. There's no doubt he has more patents on gene analysis on viral sequencing and recombination, and his theories are correct. Recombination is how viruses change. They don't change by mutation. Contrary to Dr. Fauci, the monster Fauci who was in behind the HIV spread in the research, and Dr. Gerberding, who is the head of the Center for Disease Control, who is also involved intimately with the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease and the World Health Organization on the resurrection and the promulgation of this plague. And the money trail goes right back to the Rothschilds and the Jesuits. Okay? Now, I received the documents when I went to speak against fetal tissue transplantation and cyborg research at Human Life International, a private audience with the board, International Board, March 16, 1997. And when I spoke to the International Board of their top doctors and scientists at HLI in Zurich, they gave me almost eight inches of documentation, not only about the avian flu, but about the AIDS virus and about vaccines to create ster sterile populations in sub-Saharan Africa to get rid of 185 excess sub-Saharan Africans. The AIDS virus was created directly under the control of the World Health Organization and the globalists, and uh, I received those documents. And I personally was recruited in 1974 to take a year off of medical school and do my PhD in virology with the CIA in Uganda to actually work on retroviruses and recombination to actually create the AIDS virus. So I turned it down, but I know firsthand, not secondhand about this, but I have further corroboration from my documents I got March 16, 1997. Well, the most disturbing is the avian flu. The avian flu was created with a bioengine using gene fragments of deceased miners in, in Alaska. They took these fragments and using a bioengine actually recreated the virus from nothing. They succeeded in doing this <coughs> at the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta. We know the names of the scientists involved. But the real story comes when you actually go letter by letter. And I'm a details person, if you can probably understand that. But I'm also a spiritual person. But I'm a real details person. I want to know every dot and comma and the, which way the comma is twisted. And so I started analyzing the DNA sequences over the last few years. 
and spending many, many hours on the phone off air talking to Dr. Nyman, pulling every article in the world up on avian flu. And what I discovered was very, very disturbing. The, the lethal genes, if you look at this, the same gene polymorphisms that killed my, great -grandmo my grandmother's brother and sister in the 1918-1919 pandemic. Her sister died, and then a week later, because the brother had held his sister at graveside before the coffin was closed, he died. So I have a personal vendetta with this, because this virus, by the way, you should know the 1918 flu was created through viral pass-through technologies that were being developed under Vice President, uh, the Vice President uh, at the time of Theodore Roosevelt. So we've actually had bioweapons programs in operation for over a century in America. The virus originated in Fort Lupton, Kansas, beside a military base. And you, if you line up the DNA letters, the DNA letters are a perfect match for the human WSN33 human strain of virus, which is the oldest strain in, in American databases, and the Iowa pig flu strain from the 1930s. The oldest strains, you can line up the DNA letters and show that the 1918 flu is a human-pig hybrid.